everyone today we're gonna to be doing a history video of the Reading T1 484 here on Brendan's trains around the time of World War II the Reading Railroad needed a more powerful locomotive to handle freight trains to help out the war effort. They had enough locomotives, but they didn't have enough power. Their main freight power at the time, which were the I-10A class 280s, were worn out. And sadly, the Reading couldn't spend time or money to build a brand new locomotive from the rails up. So, they looked at their 280s and decided to rebuild them into 484 Northerns. After the plants were finished, the Baldwin Locomotive Works decided to help out the Reading by sending them new parts. With the boiler of the 280 and the new parts from Baldwin, they began rebuilding their 280s. On August 6, 1945, the new type of locomotive designated as a T1 rolled out of the locomotive shops. The 2100 was a locomotive that no one on the Reading has ever seen before. Ever since then, they built 29 more engines until 1947 and the last one re was rebuilt. The new 30 locomotives were split up into two batches. The 2100 to 2119 were built in 1945 and had plain journal bearings and were used for freight trains and some various coal trains, while the last 10 T1s, numbers 2120 to 2129, were built in 1947 and had Timken roller bearings for freight and passenger trains. With a boiler pressure of 240 PSI, 70 inch diameter driving wheels, and massive 27 to 32 inch cylinders, the T1s could equal the power of 5,500 horses. These locomotives pulled freight trains and passenger trains until 1954 when they were taken out of service. But a traffic surge in 1955 brought some T1s back to service. Then in 1956, the Reading sold eight of their T1s to the Pennsylvania Railroad, and those being engines number 2107, 2111 to 2115, 2119, and 2128. Those eight engines lasted on the PRR until 1957 when they were cut up for scrap. Even though the T1s on the Pennsylvania were scrapped, the Reading did something that no other railroad had done before, and that was to start their own excursions, known as the Iron Horse Rambles, or the Reading Rambles. They decided to keep five of their T1s to pull the trains, and those engines being 2100, 2101, 2102, 2123, and 2124. Now, 2101 was used as a standby locomotive but never ran, and 2123 was used as a spare parts locomotive. 2124 was the first T1 to be used in the Rambles between Philadelphia and Shimokan. 2124 would run the Rambles until 1962, which being the first T1 to be retired. It was retired, it was sold to F. Nelson Blount for a Steamtown USA collection. 2124 would stay in Vermont until 1986, where it was moved along with the rest of the collection to Scranton, Pennsylvania. 2124 still resides at Steamtown today, and it is cosmetically restored into its Reading Rambles paint scheme. 2123, on the other hand, was less fortunate than the other four T1s. After the Rambles ended, 2123, along with 2100 and 2101, was sold to a scrapyard in Baltimore, Maryland where she would sadly later bite the dust at the hands of the scrap man's cutting torch in 1966. Now, let's get into 2102, which has run the longest out of all the T1s. 2102 would be used for the Rambles until 1964 when she was retired. In 1966, she was sold to the Steam Tours in Akron, Ohio for use on excursion trains. 2102 would run a lot of trips around the eastern United States and even going to the Durban and Greenbrier Valley Railroad. She even masqueraded as Delaware and Hudson's Lost Northern Number 302. Number 302 would pull excursions for Ross Rowland's High Iron Company until being sold again to the Allegheny Central for restoration in 1974. 
2102's restoration would be finished in 1977 and begin hauling its girth. Shortly after 2102 was built, she even double-headed with Grand Trunk Western Mikado No. 4070 on the Horseshoe Curve. Unfortunately, the 4070 would have some mechanical problems which made Conrail ban steam operations for a few years. After the incident, 2102 would be overhauled again until 1985 when it came out of the shops for the 40th birthday of the T1 class. She would then be sold to the Blue Mountain and Reading Railroad, which restored Reading and Northern 425 two years earlier. 2102 would pull excursions and even some freight trains for six years. In 1987 though, the 2102 was painted up in the People's Scheme for the signing of the US Constitution 200 years earlier. 2102 made her last run in 1991 after her flu time expired. She would then be moved to Steamtown in 1995 for a restoration that never happened. Today she is still owned by the BNMIR and is undergoing a restoration to operating condition which is scheduled to be done in early 2022. Now let's get into 2101, which is probably the most famous out of the four T1s. 2101, along with sister engine 2100, remained in the scrapyard until 1975 when she and her sister engine were purchased by Ross Rowland for the American Freedom Train project. Since 2101 was in better condition, she was chosen to be the American Freedom Train number one. While 2100 would be used as a parts locomotive, the tender was also swapped out as it was in better condition. The restoration took a surprisingly 30 days to complete, which in today's time would be near impossible. Number one would be used for the eastern part of the trip until in Chicago, when 2101 would land the train to 4449 to take it for the western trip of the tour. After the American Freedom train ended, number one would be renumbered back to its original number of 2101 and painted up into chassis system colors. A 2101's new assignment was to pull the chassis steam special to celebrate the 150th anniversary of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. For two years, Chessie 2101 would pull the Chessie Steam Special until 1979 when she was badly damaged in a roundhouse fire in Russell, Kentucky. She was then cosmetically restored as American Freedom Train No. 1 and her tender was swapped out back with 2100s. Today she still remains on stack display at the B&O Railroad Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. Now the prototype engine, number 2100, had probably the most interesting story out of all the T1s. After being used as a parts locomotive, 2100 was stored in Hagerstown, Maryland Roundhouse until 1988, when she was purchased by CEO of Lionel Trains, Richard Kuhn, which is unfortunately no longer with us. He paid $1 million to fully refurbish 2100 to running condition. Her restoration was finished in 1989 and the 2100 was back up and running once again. Thanks to Kuhn owning the 2100, Lionel Trains decided to make a scale model of 2100, which became one of the very first scale models ever made. If it wasn't for Richard Kuhn owning the real 2100, then a model of the T1 might not have been made for a long time. Unfortunately for Kuhn though, his ownership of the T1 wouldn't last for too long. He then sold it to the Ohio Central, which ran it for a week, and then they sold it to the Blue Mountain and Reading. Over a decade, the 2100 would go through several more owners until being purchased by a man looked down by the railfaring community called Thomas Payne. The reason why he was disliked because he had to convert 2100 to burn oil, which wasn't smart since the Reading T1s were designed to burn anthracite coal. When Payne converted the engine to burn oil, he did not do a very good job at it, mainly because the boiler pressure kept on dropping and actually weakened the engine's performance. The lazy oil conversion even made the whistle sound horrible as a result. Payne was going to use 2100 up in the Rockies in Ontario, Canada, but those plans never happened. In 2006 or 2007, the 2100 was moved to Tacoma, Washington. And for a little over a year, the 2100 ran on Payne's short-lived Golden Pacific Railroad. After the railroad was closed, 
the engine was moved to Richland, Washington and was put up for sale. Fortunately, in 2015, a group called Fire Up the 2100 purchased the engine in hoping to restore it to running condition. They managed to convert 2100 back to anthracycle and they're hoping to get the engine running by the year 2022.